Hi everyone, Captain Rob Thompson here. This video we're going to be going over the 90 horse EFI Honda. We're going to do the gear oil in it. Gear oil is basically going to be the same too on the carbureted one. So you're pretty much going to be able to follow along. I'm going to show you the O-rings for it. I think the 90 carbureted used the plastic ones. We'll show you guys the plastic ones too. I think the newer EFI one takes the O-rings. But we're going to see it when we get into it. As you guys can see here, the nice waffo from me hitting something in the middle of the night where I've run through there a hundred times, never had any trouble. The guy thought we hit a seal, but I don't think a seal's going to take a chunk out like that. 15 feet of water, no rocks. Stuff happens in the middle of the night. Sometimes you don't know what's there. It could have been anything floating through. And we were about 15 miles away from the marina, so we made it back fine. Nothing wrong with the prop. This is a couple years ago. Nothing, nothing happened here. Everything's true. I checked it out. Checked the straightness. All good there. This is just from this year running in North Carolina. We're going to drain this oil, change it out, do it once a year, or at least every 100 hours. If you run a lot, keep checking it. Make sure you're not getting water in there and then running water through it constantly. So you, guys, you know who you guys are, the ones churning up the mud and banging everything and making your own path. The, all that going up through all this and taking the brunt of it right there. So we're going to show you guys what to use on this. You guys at home will be able to do everything. You'll see right now it's tipped up. Don't worry about that. This drain is actually a little higher than the cavity where the oil is inside of there. So I keep it tipped up just to drain everything out. Make sure I've got everything out of it. You guys will be fine. Don't worry. We'll get you through it. All right. Stay tuned. All right, tools that we use. Busted screwdriver. The end of it has been shaved so it'll fit exactly the way that I want it to fit on these screws. Okay? In here, put the vice grips on it. Grabs a hold of it. Figured why not? I already busted the end of it off. So I am going to sacrifice it. Get a little extra leverage on it. Pop it and turn it. Pressing in on it. Another way is if you've got a flathead screwdriver like this, a little bigger, the end still fits. It's square sided shaft. You guys can put an adjustable wrench on there, get leverage that way for turning as well when you're pushing in hard. For those really stubborn ones, old OMCs, you guys use this, an impact driver. This right here is a drag length socket. You can find those at Harbor Freight. 3 8 drive. Pop that on there. On these, I usually buy three or four of them at a time. And I'll grind them down. If I can get it back on there. I'll get three or four of these. I'll grind them down, make sure they fit right. And then use those. I'm gonna make it. That one's been on there a while. But once you get it up in place, on your screw, you hold it, you twist it, and then you hit the back of it with the hammer. That'll make it jump and turn at the same exact time, which gives you just a little bit of a twist, and you'll get everything off just fine. These two guys don't work. We go with this, or if you're just doing a bunch of gear cases all at the same time. If I got six boats lined up and I'm doing six boats, I'll just do all the gear. So that's our three ways getting these screws out. Sometimes you'll see guys that have a real stubby screwdriver too. Those work really nice. Alright, I'll just softly show you on this one. Since the tip doesn't fit it anyway, you'd have to grind it down to get it in there and fit. You put it in place. I'm going to turn righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It's going to go counterclockwise, so I'm going to turn it counterclockwise. You hold it there, then you come back, you smack it with the hammer pretty hard and you'll see it'll just bump and turn at the end you'll see when it it turns its way so it'll help you actually get that out of there I'm going to show you guys that I didn't show you on the 40 horse I'll show you on there this one yeah screwdrivers is in there pushing hard Let's slide this one down so you can show you better both push in that one's not gonna work 
too big. Go back to this one, the one I made up. Nice and little. That guy fits in there good. You gonna back it up, pushing hard. That's it. That's it. That's all it took. Push in, turn. Use the handle for the leverage. That's it. I'm gonna do the bottom one too. All right, that up close stuff gets a little screwy trying to film it. I'm trying to show you guys. So in here, I'll show you guys too. I'm just gonna push in. And so you know too, you don't have to have the motor down when you do it. You guys can do this trimmed up because you're not taking the screws out yet. The oil's not gonna be draining out all over the place. You're just trying to get leverage on it to get the screw cleanly so that you're not mangling the end of this thing and then bringing it into your shop and then saying, hey, can you guys get those out for me? Because you're not gonna be high on the list. So push in there hard. In the bottom, I'm pushing up hard, up nice and square on there. I got my handle here. That's it. Just get a little leverage on to pop that screw. Keep it clean. Get that out of there. All right. It's still really windy. We've got a blocks here. I've got a bunch of two by fours. I'm going to build this up to it and drain it out because I don't want it to drizzle everywhere. The wind will catch it. It'll, it'll be whipping all over your tools, whipping all over everything. So we're going to block up to it. And remember, you can keep it trimmed up a little bit because you want everything to run out this hole. When we fill it, everything's going to be completely level. So I'll show you guys that too. Alright, we've got our drain blocked up. I'm going to pop these screws out. That one's still a little tight. I can move this over. Lock that guy out. Alright, we got O-ring. We got an O-ring and clean oil. So, I didn't put that many hours on last year. It was first year in North Carolina. Feeling everything out. Plus, I used to skiff a lot, too. I used to skiff probably more than this. This is more towards the summer and into the fall. I started using it into winter. Last time I ran, this was just a week before Christmas. Because you can still still fish and run around down here. Alright, see right there? See how the wind is whipping around? Just going to keep it down in there. Block up to it. Keep everything nice and clean. top screw next. That's the vacuum that holds it in. That's why it's not running out fast. Now watch when I pull this top screw out. It's going to start flowing a little bit more. It's fairly warm here, so it's not going to take forever. It's not like when it's cold. All right, see there it is. See how it's flowing now? I just let the air in on the back side of it. All right. Also, here we go. Not a whole lot of metal on there. That's normal. Yeah, it's normal. That's good. It's what you want to see. And clean this up. That's it. Metal on the bottom. Non-metal on top when you put them back in there. So many times you see it the other way around. It just gets thrown in there. This one's catching your metal from everything. Your gears and everything in here. Instead of floating through, it's getting caught on this. Okay, here's our wonderful tray, our assortment here that I will show you guys. All right, so screws are out. We had O-rings on it right here. And our O-rings on it. Okay, we're gonna replace these ones with O-rings. Even though this is the screw that they've been using for a long time. This one here, the plastic ones you guys saw on the 40 horse fit it perfectly if you're in a bind you can use the plastics on this one don't worry about it you're off in some far off country and you're only limited to what you've got and you go into some place and somebody has it this Yamaha one can also fit it okay there's enough surface area for it to work is it correct? no it's not correct if you've got nothing else, it'll work. Since this is a newer one, this motor is a 2015. Most of these all had the O-ring. So I'm gonna go back to the O-ring. That's this one right here. 
91301-ZW4-003. That is our number. I'll put that in the description so you guys can see it. That's what we're going to use. That right there is your plastic one. 90507-921-000. You can use that one, but you got to put it in gently. Go back and watch the 40 horse video to see how to put those in. You can't tighten them down real hard because they're just plastic. It's real thin. It'll just push its way out. You just want to seat it. The O-rings you can crank right down. Make those nice and tight. Go back afterwards and check it. If it sits all winter, you did this in the fall. Go back in the spring before you launch the boat. Just make sure everything's nice and tight. This one over here. If somebody has these ones laying around, this 90512ZW1003, this is actually a Mercury. It says Honda on it, but this is for back in the day when Honda was using Mercury gear cases. That's mostly in your 90s, 1990s. So, if you see a gear case, this one has a plastic intake on it. If you see one that's got holes drilled in it, and that's how it takes the water in. That's actually a Mercury gear case. That's only on old, old ones. So we're not going to worry about that from 2000s, 2010s on. You're not going to see that. It's a 1998. You're going to see that. It's a 94, 30 horse, 35 horse. Yeah, 35s and 45s back then. You're going to see those holes in there and you're going to know. Sometimes you'll see the paint will actually flake away. I've seen a couple 90s of that lately. And you'll see black underneath it. That's actually the Mercury gear case. So, so you guys know. And that one is much larger. Okay. I'll place this over the top so you guys can see the difference of it. Much larger hole on the inside. It's going to be sloppy. It's going to be moving all over the place. It's not going to fit right. It's going to leak. So we don't want to don't want to use that one. That's that's old school right there. But you never know. Sometimes these things pop up and you'll get in a pinch and you'll you'll be like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." It's, you know, 95 cents for a gear case washer. It's not going to work right. So stay away from that one. The newer 90s the newer larger engines i'll take these o-rings if you hear somebody say don't worry just reuse it you can just reuse it i like to change mine out i'd rather have that safety there so i know yeah i've changed them out they're good to go you can i've done it before i think probably last year i think i did it because i just moved here and i had so much going on i think i just let it ride with the ones i had in it changed the oil and just let it go it was fine didn't have any problems with it but that's up to you if I've got them, I'm going to change them. So, and they're cheap enough as it is. You're not, you're not going to break the bank on that. So, this is our selection. I'm going to give you guys this number so you know what to use. That one's in a pinch. Uh, I won't give you that number. But so you know, it's that clear plastic one. Yamaha, the orange particle ones, can work in a bind if, say, you're someplace and they don't have the ones you need. You're, you're in Mexico someplace and all they've got... Is Yamaha stuff, you know, they run the Enduro motors there. You can use it in a pinch. And this one we're going to stay away from. We're going to stay away from the Mercury style ones. Those, those are for Mercury, it's not for us. So. Alright, so we got our motor now perfectly level, so we want to be able to pump our gear oil from the bottom up. Some of you guys might notice it's not yellow. The Honda gear oil is yellow, it's just the Honda bottle with the Honda pump on top of it, which actually I think has a Suzuki nozzle on the end of it, which I had to kind of adapt a little bit, but it's plastic and it just gently screws into the threads at the end here fits in okay it does the job it doesn't leak out everywhere but it's not supposed to be perfect so we got that so we're going to pump from the bottom up we're going to displace all the air as it goes when it starts to come out the top we'll clean it we're going to leave it we're going to come back in a couple minutes let all the other air bubbles work their way out and then top off the rest of it so now here we go it's going to slowly just pump it up now these bottles you can get gear oil Wherever you can get your stuff, whatever marina you go to or boat yard or supply place, 
They'll sell these for you. That's the way you want to do it. You want to go bottom up. You don't want to try to do the nozzle and the bottle from the top and displace the air back and forth. It's just not going to be good. So we're going to keep pumping this up. All right, so pumped it up. We got to the end. You can just see. There it is right there. We're going to clean it off. We're going to wait a little bit. Gonna wait for the rest of the air to displace itself out of it. Now, on this one, it's not the Honda oil in it. This is Yamaha right now. You can use whatever manufacturer you want after it's out of warranty. If it's under warranty, use exactly what it says. Honda gear oil, Honda engine oil, Honda oils all the way. Have a service guy do it so that it's kept track of. Honda knows you've done your services. They can't complain about it. They can't deny your warranty. You're still on warranty. That's a, that's a four-letter word at a dealership saying warranty when you walk in the door. So, if you had it, bought it one place, had them service it, had them do everything. As soon as it's out of warranty, put in exactly what it says. It says 80W90. If it's a Mercury, a Bell Ray, a Yamaha, a Honda, put in 80W90. The 40 horse Honda also takes 80W90, so I use the same in both of these guys. Higher horsepower is different stuff. It's going to tell you you're going to have certain kinds of this, that, or the other. Um, try to stay away from too many after aftermarket stuff where they make a loop for everything in the world. Eh, let's stick with kind of close to it and don't don't go off too far. So do that. We're going to burp this right now. Displace our air, we'll put the screws in, and wrap this up. Alright, okay, it's been a few minutes. We're just gonna try to squeeze this, see if there's any other air bubbles in there. We did a good job. That's one pump. And you can see the fluid going through the bottom. Is there a second pump? There we go. We're getting fluid pushed out. Alright, so we know that's where we're supposed to be. We got our screws. Remember, the one without the magnet on the end goes on the top. These are O-rings this time around, so you just tighten these. You just seat them all the way in there. All right, top screw first. That way it stops the air from displacing, you know, the oil and having it rush out. This way it'll come out slower at the bottom. All right, now we come back. This one, I got the vice grip clipped onto this one here. Get on that screw all the way, pushing hard. Tighten it up and use the handle, the, the vice grip on there to help turn it and lock it in place without the top jumping out. You don't want to jump the top out. There you go, press pin all the way, nice and tight. Turn it. She's in there good. That's pretty much it for the gear oil part of it. Gear oil is fast and quick as long as you don't have anything else coming out in there. If it's white, milky, coffee looking, you got water coming in somewhere, whether it's your back seal here, whether it's your upper seal underneath your water pump, which can push down in it. Once it gets old, starts to crack, dry rods out, it'll push down that way into it. Other thing is, if you have bad O-rings or gasket material, whether it's your, your paper ones or your plastic ones, those guys fail. First thing you do, you get a little bit of water in it, change the gear oil out, change these guys, run it for a little bit, see if it happens again. If it happens again, then you know it's a seal. Then you gotta do a pressure test. That's for somebody else who's got a pressure tester, it's gotta screw it in there, and then you gotta start looking for leaks. So you're gonna pull this gear case off and start going through it and then figuring out where your leak is. If your back is leaking, 
You do those seals, do the top seals too. Don't do one and not the other. Try to bang them both out. Keep everybody, do the same thing at the same time on both of them. Get all that stuff done. I hope this helped you out. I don't know if I forgot anything else. Other than used gear oil. I'm going to show you guys used gear oil too. Almost every place has to accept used oil. So, keep it clean. Clean used oil. Which means no antifreeze in it. Try not to have gasoline in it. Just try to have it all oil. They'll know when you come in there and you got something else in it and they pour it in their container and they can see it in there. They're going to know. They're going to get pissed. So, just try to keep it oil. I have a spare five gallon container with a lid on it that I use just to put all my used oil in. So I'm going to do engine oil on another week or two. But the gear oil from both of these is going in the bucket and then that's going to go someplace else. Whether it's a regular auto mechanic, a lot of them will take it. Marine place will take it. If you know somebody that, you know, takes oil, that's where, that's where it goes. You don't need to have it laying around the house. Don't pour it out back. Nobody does that anymore. That's, you know, we're past doing that. So, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. There's 40 horses on there, too. I'm going to put these part numbers on the description. The wind is really starting to crank now. I don't think we got anything coming in. I don't think so. Who knows? All right. Hope that helped you out. I'll see you guys soon with some more Honda stuff and more fishing stuff out of North Carolina. Thanks for watching. See you later. One last thing, I know somebody's going to ask me this one too. What do you do with used oil? Well, if you're buying your marine oil from like a regular dealer, wherever you bought your, your motor from, you can always bring it back to them. They're not going to mind. You're buying oil from them. You're doing your own service work. If something big happens to break, you usually bring it back to them. They're still, you're still one of their customers. Don't think that, you know, because they didn't do the service, they're, they're not going to take it. They'll probably be more than happy to take it from you because you're still, you're still in there. You're still buying stuff from them. They appreciate the business, so they're going to take the oil back. Sometimes certain marinas will be able to take it. Just ask around. Nobody's really going to give you, you know, crap about it or anything like that. Me, I store everything. I got a five-gallon bucket. I'll store everything in this until I get it, you know, fairly good, and then I'll bring it in, and I'll dump it that way. Um, there used to be a gas station near me too that used to have a drum on the side that you can drop everything off at. But remember, keep it, you know, just oil. Don't try to mix it with antifreeze, all this other stuff that's got other places to go. But uh, don't forget to do that. That's what I'm doing with all my stuff. Everything goes in there. Here's from two today, from the 90 and from the 40 horse. I still got the engine oil to do on both engines, so that'll go in here too, and then I'll go drop that stuff off. But just in case. You can always, if you can, pour it back in the bottle you got it from, and then send it back that way too. But that, that's usually where you drop it back off at. So good luck with that, and hope any more questions, let me know, and I'll be here to answer them for you. Thanks again. Bye.